Conversations That Matter is a partner program for the Center for Dialogue at Simon Fraser University. The production of this program is made possible thanks to the support of the following and viewers like you. Welcome. Hi. <laughs> We're living in an interesting time. There's all this promise about what's going to happen as far as uh, being able to protect ourselves against aging and disease and so on. And then you run into the reality of trying to get something to market, such as, you know, having manipulated the human genome and dealing with stem cells and being able to implant them. Well, we heard 10 years ago that was going to happen, and it's still only just barely happening. Mm -hmm. I, when I heard about what you're doing, you're on the cusp of something that doesn't have to go through that same rigorous process, but can, you know, get us there faster. Give me a little snapshot on what it is that you're doing in relationship to immune technology. Sure. Uh, well, our company is called Proactive Immune Sciences, Proactive Immune for short. And what we want to do is we want to take um, people's immune cells while they're still relatively young and healthy and store them because those cells can be brought back later on for a therapeutic application later in their life. And, and at this point, we don't know all the potentials, but one of the really key ones is going to be cancer immune therapy. And that's where they basically take your uh, immune cells, they target them to the cancer, they expand those cells, and they introduce them back into your system. And that's just kind of going through some early clinical trials now, but billions of dollars are being spent, and they're getting some tremendous, tremendous results. So we're, we're really excited about the potential of the service that we can provide. So cancer is where, you're, uh, where you see the greatest uh, uh, benefit to somebody in, in being able to fight off the, the introduction to cancer maybe later in life? Kind, well, immediately. It, yeah. And immediately only because there's so much work being spent right now on cancer immune therapy. You know, for the first time in cancer research, they're finding a way that they can really uh, go after the cancer. So it's not just something that kind of kills it's actually something that eradicates it from your system and uh, takes your own T cells so the T cells are part of your immune system and they're they're uh, an active cell that basically identifies any um, foreign object in your body any cells that are uh, not functioning the way they should so call it a cancer cell and they er eradicate them so what what they're doing is they're taking these T cells and targeting them so that they aggressively go after the cancer. So it's kind of like creating a drug out of your own body. But haven't we known this for a long time? And, and despite that, didn't yeah. the, the whole cancer research side of things go after, you know, uh, radiation therapy and a cocktail of drugs and on and on, or chemotherapy and, and so on? Uh, why are we now coming back to immune cells as potentially being a great way to fight cancer? Uh, well, it's, that's a great question, and I'm not sure I can answer why something did or didn't happen in the past. Um, I think what's happened is as we've understood more about the genetics of cancer and the genetics of our immune system and how things actually work on, on a very um, microscopic kind of basis, uh, I think we're understanding enough now to know that, that a lot of what happens in, in cancer is at some point the cancer mutates to the point where it no longer um, where our immune system no longer recognizes it as cancer, mm -hmm. and so it doesn't, it doesn't attack it. So then the cancer is allowed to continue to grow and, and survives. It's, it's almost like a, a mechanism that survives on its own. I think it's just we're at the point now where we're understanding enough about the science of how the immune system work, works and how cancer works to evade the, the immune system. And I think it's just one of those things. We've, we're just learning more every day. So why is it important, you said, uh, to harvest our immune cells when we're young and healthy? Why is it important that we do that? Don't we have the same immune system as we age? Well, we have the same immune system, but as we age, our immune system loses its effectiveness. So as one of the key components of our immune system are our T cells. And our T cells are one of the cells that goes after, and as I said, it, it targets, you know, uh, viral uh, viruses, bacteria, a number of other things, or cells that have mutated and, and are not healthy, and they become cancer cells. Um, as we age, our body stops producing T cells. So around about the time of six, mid, six, mid to late 60s... We, we stop producing T cells? Yeah. Our, our, oh. There's a thing called our thymus, which sits mm -hmm. just above your heart, and it basically stops producing 
T cells. So by the time we're in our, our mid to late 60s, our body's no longer producing new T cells. So what we have in our system is kind of what we've got. And, and over time, the T cells, the simplest way is to say that they become tired, and I'm not using scientific terms, but they become it's tired. It's a metaphor. It, it's yeah. a metaphor, and yeah. so their, their ability to respond to new infections or, or new diseases or things that might come up that they would normally go after starts to diminish with time. And, and so the whole decline of our immune system is called immunosenescence. It's been well documented, and, and you can track the decline of, of T cells over time. And this happens to all of us? All of us. <laughs> like you can't exercise it away or get better sleep? No. Or, no. Okay. no, at least at this point, there's no way that we know. And there's a lot of work being done to try and understand it. There are a number of, uh, of uh, scientists that are working on aging and trying to understand specifically what are the mechanisms that cause aging in our immune system. Mm -hmm. And there's some correlations between uh, aging and our, between our immune system as it ages. And, uh, what and, and mitochondrial <coughs> breakdown, as I understand well, it, is. Yeah. Yeah. So, you yeah. know, every time a cell, uh, cell splits, so you get a fragmentation of the DNA, and at some point the cell becomes. Yeah, uh, unable Less to respond. Less robust or, or vigorous. So, Less yeah. vital. Yeah. And so the idea is if, if we take the cells, and it's a pretty simple process, we just take a unit of blood and out of that unit of blood we would separate out the, all of the white blood cells, so all of your immune cells, and, uh, and we would store them cryogenically. They can be stored indefinitely. It's been done for decades. Uh, there are other cell lines that have been stored, but immune cells freeze very well, they thaw and recover very well, and they retain all of the vitality they had at the time that you took them. So the idea is really take a bit of, of yourself in a healthier state and have it available later in your life when your immune system isn't quite as healthy. Because if you look at the statistics, you know, 89% uh, of the people over 55, 80, 89% of all the cancers that are going to be diagnosed are going to be in people of 55 and older. Got to get you to hang on for just a second while we take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. Conversations That Matter is a not-for-profit program made possible thanks to the charitable support of the following and from viewers like you. Please visit conversationsthatmatter.tv and help us to continue to produce this program. So, so this is an issue that's related to, uh, you know, age. Yeah, age. adult onset cancer. Like, we're not talking about children who their their, their systems have been compromised. It's like it, yeah, cancer is. A, it's a yeah. Cancer is really an age-related disease. You know, for well, the most part. Yeah. For the most part. I mean, yeah. there, yes, there are incidents of childhood cancer and yeah. and things that happen younger in in people's lives, but for the most part, the bulk of cancer is it happens in people that are older. Mm -hmm. and, and largely it's because, you know, our, our, we're old enough that there have been enough mutations in our cells that at some point the cells find a way to evade the immune system and away they go. And cancer can then start to take hold. Yes. And so, you know, our idea is bank your cells while you're still relatively young and healthy. You haven't had cancer. You're, you don't have cancer that you know of at that point. You have those cells available as a kind of like a backup for your immune system. And so if you're uh, later in your life, at some point if you needed to, uh, you had cancer and you were going to participate in one of these immune therapies, you'd have a bank of younger cells that would be available for the clinical trial or, the tr or for the treatment. Do we know that this works? We know that we can recover the cells. We know that the younger the cell, the more vital they are. We know that um, as, as they've, they've uh, used cells in, in these therapies, the younger the cell, the better the cell responds. Um, the clinical uh, eff efficacy of these new immunotherapies, they're going to prove all of that. We know absolutely that we can bank the cells. We know absolutely they'll be recoverable. We know absolutely that they're going to be healthier and stronger than they are when you're 20 years later. And we do know that healthy uh, T cells in your body at the time of harvesting are attacking those viruses and cancers that are ever present. Absolutely. So yeah, they've been doing their job. And uh, the other thing that happens with T cells is over time, say they have a memory. They, they have a memory of everything they've resisted. T cells do? T cells do. And mm -hmm. so once, once the T cell has, has responded to a particular virus, for example, um, 
it will retain a mem memory of that. And if it's responded enough times, that's the only thing it'll respond to at some point. So the more often mm. that you respond, you have illnesses, and we get stuff all the time. Like our body is constantly fighting off viruses, bacteria, you name it, fungus, y you name it. Our body is always fighting. We're, everything's dynamic. So, but over time, you kind of think of it that after, after a while, the T cells all become identified to specific things, yeah. and there aren't other T cells available to new uh, diseases or new types of cancer or whatever it is. So they become all targeted. So one of the things that we think is going to be a real benefit is if you banked your cells from an earlier time in your life, and it doesn't have to be like when you're 20, it can be, you know, I'm in my 50s, I, I bank my cells now and, and I would have more active T cells today than I will probably have when I'm 75. Mm -hmm. So, I, I but but based on what you were just saying, they would be they would have a memory of going after specific things. Yes. What ha what what happens now if there's a, a new, uh, you know, uh, invader in my body at the time that I uh, reingest the uh, the T cells? Um, like, are you able to program the T cells so that they can do specific things? Uh, well, that's so cancer immune therapy. Mm -hmm is basically reprogramming T cells to go after a cancer. So you're gonna, that's what you're so doing anyway? That's what, yeah, yeah. we're not doing that as a, in our company, but other scientists and other companies are developing the techniques to take those T cells, reprogram them, in some cases, to go after the cancer. Or if they're already responsive to the cancer, but the body isn't making enough of a response to, to deal with the cancer, mm -hmm. They stimulate those and then reintroduce them back so that they go after the cancer. Why is it important that somebody store their own T cells? Why not just go to the bank and uh, make a withdrawal from you know the, oh, that's, uh, the bank that's there? That's a great question because <laughs> our T cells are triggered to our body. They're, they basically identify anything in our particular bodies that's foreign. If I was to give you my stems, my my, T, my immune cells what would happen is your body would resist them, would reject them because they're not your cells. Mm -hmm. you know, so, so there's the, a rejection problem. There's a rejection. It's called host versus graft. But mm -hmm. basically, um, yeah, they're foreign to your body. So you can't get, they're, they're, they're targeted to your own body. If I try and give them to someone else, that person's body will reject them. Their mm -hmm. immune system will reject those new foreign immune cells. Now there is work being done to try and figure out a way to overcome that but there's nothing right now that is actually effective. So the reason you want to keep your own T cells and your own immune cells is because you know they'll never be rejected by your body. This is our second break. We'll be back in a moment. Conversations That Matter is a not-for-profit program made possible thanks to the charitable support of the following and from viewers like you. Please visit conversationsthatmatter.tv and help us to continue to produce this program. They give you a, a kind of a, an auto recovery or a backup system. Absolutely. Yeah. You know that's the other thing is if if you had a, a a store of these cells, and you did have to go through chemotherapy and radiation, and your immune system was compromised, um, those cells would be available to help reconstitute your immune system, help you get your immune system back quicker, and there'd be no rejection issues because they're your own cells. Okay, I got a whole host of questions like, uh, well, <laughs> wouldn't I have been better off doing it when I was 20? Uh, you know, now that I'm almost 60, it's like, isn't it too late? No. Uh, like, well, <laughs> I, I, think, I think it would be a great idea to do it when you're in your 20s because you're, you're going to have a lot of cells that haven't been um, pre-targeted to something. They're going to be a lot younger and healthier. Um, so start when you're in your 20s and bank them over time and build up a nice, nice bank of cells that are available. But if you're in your 60s, Stu, you're a pretty healthy guy, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Well, there you go. I'm fortunate. So yeah. I would bank them now because chances are, with all the statistics and everything, and I, I hate to sort of bring, be the bearer of bad news. As I we, know what the numbers are, and they're not good. No, but as yeah. we get older, we tend to have more issues with illnesses, whether it's influenza or pneumonia or cancer. Uh, they tend to affect us later in life. So if you bank your cells now, they're going to be healthier than by the time you're 80 when, when you might have something happen and you might be looking for healthier cells. Okay, so uh, when, when I have you harvest some of my cells, how many are you taking? And is it going to be enough to get me through the, <coughs> the, the last third of my life? <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a 
hard question to answer, but I'll, um, what the, the number of cells that we would get from a, a single unit of blood would be enough to handle any of the sort of therapeutic treatments for cancer that are being developed right now. Okay. So from that standpoint, we've kind of got you covered. But you talked about influenza a moment ago, and you made me go, okay, well, hang on a second. I want to have those ones in case I get cancer. I want to have some extra ones just in case I get the flu. Uh, and, and, and I'm thinking, well, isn't that a much better flu shot than getting the flu shot? <laughs> Yeah, um, <laughs> I know that I'm taking you off track a little bit here, but I, 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 you can't help but start to think that way. Um, and we've certainly been thinking that way, and we've been looking at as much, uh, much of the many of the research papers that we can to find out what work is being done on this. But right now, there are no banks of immune cells, so the study of taking younger cells and introducing them later can't be done in humans right now because there are no banks of, of immune cells. But when you look at the science and you look at how the cells age and you look at how our system responds, whether it be a younger person or an older person, one of the clear differentiators is the health of the T cells and, and the other immune cells. Mm -hmm. So our belief is that there's probably going to be a pretty good application for taking those, those cells from when you're younger and introducing them when you're older and, and getting a better response to influenza or, or other things. Because again, the cells haven't all been targeted to something, so yeah. they should mm -hmm. be available to attack the new, the new virus that's, that's inv invading your body. Um, our recommendation is actually going to be that people bank cells every couple of years and build up a, a bigger volume of cells. You got a bigger so, bank account. Bigger bank account. Yeah. And because it's gonna take um, a number of times, like if we wanted to re reconstitute somebody's immune cells, it's going to take them coming back a few times to do that, to get enough cells to mm -hmm. realistically mount a response. But the other thing that's happening now is they're finding ways to uh, grow the cells. So take, take a small number of cells and increase them. And, and so I'm confident that another 5, 10 years, maybe a little longer, but you know, at this point we don't know, we'll be able to take a small group of cells and expand them all kind of proportionally so that they could be used later in their life. When gaining interest on your deposit. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kinda. Isn't that something? Because as you're talking, I'm, I'm uh, remembering a, uh, a fellow that I interviewed a number of years ago who was a leader in complementary and health uh, medicine. When I met him, he was 92 years of age and in the pink of health. Yes. And I'm going, holy smokes. And we're talking about longevity. And I said, well, I don't see any reason why you wouldn't make it to 100. And he goes, well, you know, you never know. Once you get to, to be 90, uh, your body doesn't have the same defenses. Six months later, he died from the flu. Yeah. And so That's I'm sad. now thinking, well, if this technology had been available to him then, he might still be with us. He might. You know, and, and that yeah. would certainly be something that we would be uh, looking for researchers that would want to research how to develop those kind of therapies. Mm -hmm. Because my belief is having those younger, healthier cells is going to have all kinds of potential, whether it's to give your immune system a boost later mm -hmm. in your life. And again, this doesn't exist today, so it's, it's a little bit theoretical. We do it in mouse m models, so mm -hmm. mice are something that, that scientists use that, uh, as a way to look at, at immune responses and things. And one of the things they found is, is they take um, cells from the young mouse and introduce it to the old mouse when the old mouse is ill and that, and vice versa. And the young mouse cells always perform better than the old mouse's cells, mm -hmm. whether the mouse is old or young. Final break. We'll be right back. Conversations That Matter is a not-for-profit program made possible thanks to the charitable support of the following and from viewers like you. Please visit conversationsthatmatter.tv and help us to continue to produce this program. So, so we got to see whether or not that way works its way up sort of the... Through humans. Yeah, to, to humans. Uh, but the, it looks like the science suggests that it's there. So yeah. let's say I'm going, okay, I want to know where do I go store my uh, T cells? How do, I, how do I do this? What's the process? process is you would come to our website. You would uh, sign on. You would provide us uh, some of your medical history. Um, you would pay for the service. We would then book a, an appointment for you to go to a, a clinic and have uh, a unit of blood taken. Mm -hmm. um, that blood is then shipped uh, via medical courier to our, our facilities. We separate the immune cells out 
cryogenically freeze those, store them. We let you know all the way along in the process what's happening. And, uh, and then every probably six months, you're going to receive some information about what's happening in the area of, of immune-based therapies because it is an exploding area. So one of the things we want to do is we want to keep our customers really informed of all the exciting developments that are happening. Mm -hmm. And so, so at that point, your cells are safely stored. You really don't have to worry about them. You know they're there. You pay an annual storage fee, which is not, not very much. And then we would encourage you every three to five years to top up your bank, you know, put a few more cells in, do it again. Huh. Okay, so where are we at as, as far as the regulatory process of being able to make this happen? Because if you look at stem cell development or drug development, it's, it can be a decade easily yeah. in the development. Are you facing those same kinds of challenges? No, we're not, um, because what we're doing is we're taking your cells and we're going to store them for you back. So it's called autologous use. So we're storing them for individuals. So no, there's, um, you know, we have to be approved by Health Canada and we'll be FDA uh, registered in that. And then there are a couple of accreditation agencies that, that look at how you handle cell lines to make sure that you're following appropriate techniques. But these now, techniques already exist. They exist. And they're approved. They're approved. So They've been around for a long time. You may have heard of stem cell banking. Yep. Um, stem cell, cord blood stem cell ba banking uses very similar protocols. Uh, so we, we would be using very similar protocols to what they're currently using, and they've been around for a long time. So really the only hurdle at this point is to confirm the human testing uh, that it works. And right now is the perfect time to be prepared so that when it does if it if it you've got the younger cells absolutely right and we think of it as a as kind of like a bio life insurance that it basically allows you to store a bit of yourself that that is going to remain vital and healthy and and have it available later in your life should you ever need it so we'll meet all the regulatory uh, requirements for banking the cells and any therapeutic use of those cells that's being, those people have to go through all the clinical trials and the FDA and the Health Canada approvals. That's the long development cycle. Cancer immune therapy is just going through that now. Um, there's some, some clinical trials underway down in the States. And a lot of the stuff is being rushed through because they're getting such positive results. So well, we're, we're excited. Well, this is the kind of thing that gets me excited and I want to, and I'm hoping that it works for my own greedy self-interest because I want to live a long and healthy, healthy <laughs> life between now and when I hit 100. <laughs> well, that's actually our goal. We want to help people live longer, healthier lives, yeah. you know, so that, um, you know, you're, you're, we're all going to pass away at some point, but I'd like us all to have a healthier run right up until the very end, you know, and it has benefits potentially for the healthcare system oh, yeah. and, and, and just for quality of life. And, and in fact, the company was started um, because our, one of our founders, uh, Dr. Robert Holt, was looking for a company to bank his own immune cells. He works, he's a cancer researcher, a geneticist, and he works um, in this area. And as he started to look at the decline of, of our immune system and specifically the T cells, he basically started looking for a company that could bank his, his and his family's immune cells so that he'd be protected. Because until you're up and running, it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. It's a great idea at the moment. Yeah. But you're this close. We're, we're this close. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming in and sharing that. You're welcome. Thank yeah. you.